Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. Recently, I put up a poll over on my community page here on YouTube and I asked, which abrasive filament would you be most interested in seeing me try out on the Flash Forge Adventure 5M? And the majority of you decided on carbon fiber PLA. So I said, all right, I'm gonna give you what you want. So I went around and I was looking for a carbon fiber PLA to try and I learned some things along the way. The main thing that I learned is, even though carbon fiber PLA sounds like it would be really strong, there's a ton of people online that have tried it that say the complete opposite. And in fact, it can actually be kind of brittle. Looks nice, but not the best choice that you wanna go for if you're looking for something that has strength. So since I figured if you want to use carbon fiber PLA, you're probably looking for something to give you more strength than regular PLA. So I decided to look into carbon fiber PETG and I found a brand I wanted to go with. It was from Everyone, and I got it for about $24 over on Amazon. And after I got that filament, I wanted to make sure it was nice and dry. So I threw it inside of the iBus Polyphemus filament dryer, which I also did a review on. You can check that out if you want. There's a card somewhere and there's definitely a link down in the description. And I dried it for about six hours on the recommended temperature for PETG carbon fiber. And after that was done, I threw it on my printer. And before I printed anything, I decided to do a calibration test. I decided to run a temperature tower that's really easy to do from Orca Slicer. On the spool, the recommended printing temperatures is between 230 degrees Celsius and 250 degrees Celsius. So I ran the temperature tower for those temperatures with five degree increments in between. And here is the result. So the point of a temperature tower is to give you an idea of the best temperature that you should use for that particular filament that you're using. And you can determine that in a few different ways. Over here on this side, you see these little cones here that tests out the stringing at the particular temperatures. And you can see the temperatures change as the tower goes up. It also tests out the overhang quality here as well as the bridging in between. And then we're just gonna look at them and see which temperature looks the best. That's one of the ways that you can figure out what kind of temperature that you should be printing at. So let me take a good look at this. First thing I can tell you about this filament in the temperature is that 250 degrees Celsius is too hot in my printer. When I had it at 250 degrees, it was just oozing through the nozzle. And I am using a 0.6 millimeter nozzle because that is a hardened steel nozzle, which is highly recommended for an abrasive filament such as this, because if you're running through the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, you're going to wear down that nozzle a lot more quickly than you would if you used the hardened steel nozzle. So 250 was a bit too much. And as I'm looking at it, I do see the most amount of stringing is also on the 250 degree Celsius temperature. But as far as the surface quality goes, to me, the nicest surface along these parts right here is at 230 degrees Celsius. That's the coolest temperature. And then also got to test the strength as well. So the whole point is trying to find a nice middle ground between how nice it looks and how strong it is. So I'm going to try to break this. Now this the did print with the brim, so this comes apart pretty easily. This was a part of the brim. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna try to break this with my bare hands and see how far I can get. And I might need a tool for this. So let me see if I can break this with my bare hands. Can't do it. I cannot break this apart with my bare hands. Way too hard. So I need a tool. I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna grab the 250 degree tower and see how much effort it's gonna take for me to break this off. I'm left-handed, so I should probably use my left hand. Yeah, that's... Well, that's, uh, <laughs> I would say that is pretty tough. It's on there, it's on there quite good. Uh, let me try at 230 up here. All right, so, I was able to just kind of just rip off the top of this 230 um, degree one without too much trouble. Let's try the 235. 235 is a little bit tougher. Let me try 240. 
240 is tougher than the 235 and then let me try the 245 yeah it's also kind of tough to try to break that apart at 245 as well then i was actually able to just rip this part off and that was for 230 i'm guessing it was already compromised but i was able to just break that apart so for me i think i would pick a temperature between 235 and 240 just based on the quality of these overhangs here um, because if i'm going to be using this i would use it for something that's more functional as opposed to something that's supposed to look nice and beautiful like a statue so i'll be using this for things that i'm just going to have in the car where it's going to be in the heat or just things that you know i just want to use but i don't really care about how pretty it is in fact I've got a few things that I want to show you now. So this first print here is a screwdriver and it can actually hold different screwdriver bits either right there when you want to use it. And then over at the bottom of it, you can actually unscrew this and you can store more bits on the inside. And there's a few different sizes to this that you can go ahead and print. I'll leave a link to it where you'll be able to find it and just take a look at the surface quality. I think that the surface quality is pretty nice overall. You still see some layer lines here and there, but overall it is nice and smooth. And I do like this, be able to store some screwdriver bits over in this thing. And then another thing that I printed was this little storage basket right here. I actually shrunk this down to 60% scale to try to save some time and save some filament. But the way that this is printed is very, very dainty because it only uses a little bit of filament at a time in order to make up this very nice diamond shaped pattern. And I haven't done anything to this box after I printed it, but you just kind of look on the inside and you see that there is very little stringing inside of those diamonds. Very, very little. It's very clean. And then here's a look at the underside of it. Nice, smooth underside. This is a very nice storage container. Now just imagine it being 40% larger, you'll really be able to store some uh, decent sized stuff in here. But yeah, this box looks very nice. I am happy with it. But then there's some other things that I printed in this as well that I can use actually in real life, such as a sunglasses holder that I can attach to the visor inside of my car. Since for some reason, Chevy decided not to include a sunglasses compartment in my car. So 3D printing went ahead and took care of that. Another cool print that I saw was this cool little hook thing that you can attach to your steering wheel and it has these two pegs and you can actually take your phone and stick it on those pegs. So if you are like in your car for lunch and you're just looking at videos, you'll be able to just put that right on your steering wheel while you're eating or whatever. So you don't actually have to hold your phone, which is great if you don't have a car uh, phone holder inside of your car already. This is not something that you use when you're driving. It's just something that you use when you're just sitting there and you just want to look at something directly in front of you and you don't want to use your hands. I thought that was a very useful thing as well. And since it's going to be in the car and spring is here and summer is around the corner, it's going to get hot and the PETG will be able to withstand those temperatures better than PLA does. So those are just a few practical prints that I use with this filament. And I do have to say that it prints nice and easy as well. And it probably helps that I dried it out nice and thoroughly inside the filament dryer before actually trying to print it. But once it started printing, nice and smooth. I haven't had any problems with it. I really like it. I like the color. I wanted to go for something that wasn't just, you know, stereotypical black carbon fiber. So everyone has some different colors of the carbon fiber PETG that you can check out and blue is my favorite color. So that's why I decided to go with that. And if you're wondering about the profile that I used, if you're using Orca Slicer, then they do have a generic Flash Forge PETG carbon fiber preset, and I just changed the temperatures in it. I'm looking at it right now, and its default temperature is 220 degrees for the hot end and then 70 degrees for for the bed, but I'm just changing that depending on the temperature that I want to use. So I'll change that to 230 to 235. And then for the bed temperature, I just set it at 80 because 80 is just what I like and it works. So I'm just going to keep it that way. But other than that, you can just use all the other um, options from that preset and it should be all right. 
So that's it for the carbon fiber filament. I want to thank you all so much for watching. And I am going to make more videos in the future about other abrasive filaments ran through the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. And I'm going to start it with the second most popular pick in that poll, which is glow in the dark filament. So if you want to see that, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be making more videos about some other abrasive filaments in the future.